90% of successful cyber attacks start with just one email. It's not zero days or elite hackers typing in green code. It's a fake invoice attachment, a link to a supposed missed voicemail, or a perfectly crafted email from your boss that isn't actually from your boss. In our last video, we explored what are different protocols and their strengths, weaknesses, and how attackers exploit those protocols a very high level. But today, we're going deep into the very first door attackers try to open, the most exploited protocol family in cybersecurity, email protocols, SMTP, IMAP, POP3. We'll break down exactly what they do how attackers twist them, and how cybersecurity professionals build layers of defense, use smart tools, and train people to keep organizations safe. Let's pull back the curtain on your inbox. Every single time you send, receive, or even just open an email, you're using a set of invisible background rules or languages called protocols. Think of them like the different workers in a digital mailroom. They're not flashy, you don't see them working, but they control everything. How your email gets picked up to be sent, where it goes on its journey, and how you access your mail once it arrives. There are three main protocols that do these different jobs. Don't worry about memorizing them all at once, we'll break them down. There's the one that sends your email called SMTP. The one that lets you download email to a single device called POP3. And the one that lets you access and sync your mail from anywhere called IMAP. Let's see how they work, and crucially, where the danger hides in each one. SMTP, the outbound mail truck. SMTP, the simple mail transfer protocol, is all about sending emails. Imagine writing a letter, putting it in a mailbox, and a mail truck picks it up to deliver it across town. That's SMTP. Your email app sends the message from your device to your mail server using a connection often on port 587. Then your server hands it off to the recipient's server, usually via port 25. But here's the fundamental issue with SMTP by itself. It doesn't check IDs. It doesn't verify who you are or if you're actually allowed to send using that sender address. That's why attackers can easily spoof or fake addresses and send phishing emails that appear to come from your CEO, your IT team, or even your own email address. It looks real because the basic protocol doesn't stop them from pretending to be someone else. POP3, the one-way mail clerk. POP3, post office protocol version 3, is designed to download emails to your device and then typically delete them from the server. Think of it like this. You walk into the post office, get your mail from your box and the box is empty. The mail is only with you now. That's POP3 great if you only ever check email on one device. It uses port 110, which is often insecure, plain text, or port 995, which is secure with SSL or TLS encryption. If you use port 110 without encryption, anyone in the middle like an attacker on a public Wi-Fi network could easily read your emails and steal your username and password just by listening in on the connection. Your login details and private messages are sent in plain text. IMAP, the cloud-based filing cabinet. IMAP, Internet Message Access Protocol, is what most modern email apps and websites rely on. It's like logging into your secure online filing cabinet or mail vault, where messages stay on the server, and you can access and manage them from any device, anywhere. You can organize emails into folders, delete or read them, and the changes instantly sync across all your devices because the main copy stays on the server. It uses port 143, which is often insecure, plain text, or port 993, which is secure with SSL or TLS encryption. Like POP3, using port 143 without encryption exposes your messages and login credentials in transit. IMAP is more flexible than POP3, but absolutely needs proper encryption using port 993 to keep your connection safe. The dangers of these basic unverified protocols aren't just theoretical. They cost real people real money. Barbara Corcoran, the famous investor from Shark Tank, 
lost nearly $400,000 from a single email. Her assistant received a message that looked exactly like it was from their attorney, asking to wire funds for a property deal. The email address looked right, the content sounded real. It even had an attached invoice, but it was fake. The attacker used SMTP spoofing, taking advantage of the fact that SMTP doesn't check who is really sending the email. And because the attorney's domain didn't have proper security checks configured, the kind we'll talk about next, the email server receiving the message had no way to tell it was a fraud. It looked 100% legitimate. One email, one click, wire transfer gone, nearly half a million dollars vanished. That's the very real, very painful consequence of unsecured email protocols and a lack of proper defenses. Learning something new about cyber attacks? We go even deeper inside our Cyber Explainer Discord community, packed with resources, tools, peers, and Q&A. Join using the link in the description and pinned comment. It's the best place to continue your cybersecurity learning journey. Now let's shift gears and see how cybersecurity professionals build defenses to stop these attacks. Securing email for a company or organization isn't about installing one tool and hoping for the best. It's about creating layers of defense, just like building a castle with gates, guards, traps, strong walls, and watchtowers. Each layer catches what the previous one missed. Let's walk through how professionals do it starting from the outside verifying if the email is even legitimate in the first place. When a company owns a domain name, like yourcompany.com, they need to tell the internet exactly who is allowed to send emails using that name. This stops spoofing. They do this using special records published in their domain's DNS, SPF, Sender Policy Framework. Think of it as a guest list for mail servers. It tells receiving mail servers, only the mail servers, identified by their IP addresses or names, listed here are allowed to send email on behalf of our domain, yourcompany.com. If an email comes from a server not on that list, it fails the SPF check. This list is published as a TXT record in DNS. It looks a bit technical, but V is just the version, include, lists, approved servers, and all means reject anything not on this list. DKM, Domain Keys Identified Mail. This is like applying a unique digital signature to every email you send. It uses cryptography complex math to sign parts of the email, like the sender, subject, and even some of the body content. The recipient's server can verify this signature using a public key also published in DNS. If even a single character is changed in the email after it's signed, say, during transit. The signature breaks, proving the message was tampered with. DMARC, domain-based message authentication, reporting, and conformance. This is the policy manager. After a receiving server checks SPF and DKM, DMARC tells it exactly what to do if they fail. Should the email be rejected entirely, sent to spam, quarantine, or just let through but reported? You can also tell receiving servers to send you reports, giving you visibility into who's trying to spoof your domain, legitimate or not. A typical DMARC record looks like this. P sets the policy, like reject, and RUA is often an email address where you get those valuable reports. Pro tip, professionals use dedicated DMARC monitoring tools. They gather those reports and turn them into easy to understand dashboards. This shows you who's sending email using your domain, legitimate services you use, or malicious attackers trying to trick people. Even if emails are authenticated, attackers can try to exploit the email server directly to send spam, steal data, or gain a foothold. Professionals lock down the server itself. They make sure all connections to and from the mail server use TLS, a secure, encrypted tunnel. IMAP connections must use port 993, POP3 must use port 995, and connections sending mail, SMTP, from devices must use port 587 with start TLS, which upgrades the connection to be encrypted. Insecure plain text ports, 110, 143, and direct client connections to 25 
are disabled or blocked by firewalls. No shouting passwords in public. An open SMTP relay is like leaving the post office lobby unlocked for any spammer to walk in and use your facilities to send junk mail. Professionals configure servers to prevent outsiders from using it to send email unless they are authorized users. They require multi-factor authentication, MFA, for everyone logging into email accounts, users and administrators. Basic username password is simply not enough anymore. MFA adds that second required step, making it much harder for stolen credentials to Incredible. be used. Incredible. You've just taken a significant step in understanding a core part of cybersecurity. You learned what SMTP, IMAP, and POP3 are and what jobs they do, how attackers exploit their weaknesses, like spoofing via SMTP, and how cybersecurity professionals build fortress-level defenses using DNS authentication records. But this is just the beginning of email security. In the next episode, we'll uncover how security gateways, sandboxing, and real-time monitoring help in securing email infrastructure. And you even get your first hands-on peek into analyzing email trust signals using tools like MX Toolbox. Comment the word email security below and we'll send you a free one-page quick reference guide that covers everything we explored today. It's designed to be printed, pinned to your wall, or kept by your desk with concise, easy to remember summaries of ports, protocols, email defenses, and key terms like SPF, DKIM, and DMARC. Just drop email security in the comments and watch for a reply with the download link. This guide will become your secret weapon as you continue mastering email security. And of course, join the Cyber Explainer Discord community to ask questions and learn with others. Make sure you subscribe to Cyber Explainer for more videos breaking down complex cyber concepts and stay cyber curious.